Hello, my name is Michelle Elia, and I'm here to talk to you today a little bit more deeply about how reading is processed in the brain. We are so lucky to have the amazing research of neuroscientists like Stanislaw Dahan and Bruce McCandless, who have shed light on exactly what is happening in the brain of good readers and also in the brains of not so good readers to reveal how we can target our instruction to ensure all students can read. The first thing we need to know is that reading happens on the left side of the brain. And we wanna make sure that our instruction targets the regions of the brain involved in reading and good readers. This begins back in the back of our brain on the left side in our orthographic processor, um, uh, which is going to be the brain's letterbox back in the occipital lobe. So here we process each and every letter from words. And the important thing to know is that from birth, our brains don't process those letters. So we have to teach the brain to recognize those letters. Explicit systematic instruction is so important in revealing the reading brain. We wanna make sure that our teachers are teaching in such a way so as to build neural pathways between the different regions on the left side of the brain. Beginning back here with the orthographic processor in the occipital lobe, and then moving through the brain along what Jane Ashby calls the phonological pathway Way, to the front of the brain where we're going to process sounds in Broca's areas. So the phonemes um, in Broca's area. So if you take your left hand, make a Y, we can connect. Back here is our letters. Up here are our sounds. And we have to develop this pathway. How do we pa develop the pathway? Well, the defining guide really explains this beautifully. So let's take a look at the language in the defining guide. Since neural connections required for reading do not exist between these areas in the preliterate brain, efficient pathways are built, and I love this part, <laughs> efficient pathways are built with explicit instruction and deliberate practice. This instruction has a significant influence on building these networks over and above immersion and in instruction that is not explicit. So it is our explicit instruction that make sure that the brain's letterbox back here in the occipital lobe is able to recognize the letters, each and every letter. And once that process begins, um, Dr. Dahan talks about this explosion into the left hemisphere, first connecting to phonology and then to meaning. But we have to build this pathway, the pathway that connects our letters back here to our sounds up here. So if we wanna do this on our brain, letters, sounds, letters, sounds. So we need to build this pathway. And the only way to build the pathway is through explicit systematic instruction with the appropriate number of repetitions for each child in order to develop that automatic connection. And then once our brains connect from the letters to the sounds, we'll then connect to the meaning of those words here in our temporal lobe. We'll tap into our oral language and our lexicon, our oral lexicon to all of the meaning and context we know about those words that we're decoding. But in order to make these connections in the brain, we have to teach decoding explicitly. And this is critical. So teachers, you can now call yourself neurosurgeons because you have changed the reading brain of students. I also love the wise words um, of Stanislaw Dahan as he quipped that when it comes to teaching reading, Neuro, neuroscientists, there are no reading wars with neuroscientists. So when it comes to teaching reading, neuroscientists know how reading is acquired and processed in the brain. And so we need to adjust our instruction to the brain to ensure we're lighting up the left side of our brain, beginning with making the connection to each and every letter in the words, and then connecting those letters to the sounds, those phoneme grapheme correspondences. And then once our students decode those words, connecting to the meaning and context and what they know about those words based on their oral language, vocabulary and background knowledge. But it is a very complex process in the brain. And as educators, we need to know this process so that we can ensure our instruction is aligned to it. Thank you for your time.